Yeah, I'm in the booth. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. What y'all need some proof? Introducing watch my two videos, man. racks a two week racks challenge. Ronnie Speed. Yeah, Ronnie Speed. Ronnie Speed. When I drive, I make video. And then, you know, where you were just showing all your 2500, 2500. I said, okay. All right. I said, I can get with that. Introducing the two racks a week challenge. Let's go, let's go. Man, what's going on, people? Ronnie Speed coming back. Here we have another winner from the two racks a week challenge. Here we have Larry, man. Larry, do a quick introduction. You know, let the audience know uh, what platform you drive on, um, how long you uh been driving, and what is your market. All right, I'm my name is Larry. I've been driving for seven years. Um, I drive for Uber and Lyft. And um, I try to stay away from Uber Eats. <laughs> Just strictly ride shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, real quick, uh, why why you try to uh, stay away from Uber Eats? I mean, it's cool, like, if you need to get some walks in. But I just feel like I get in my zone when I'm just driving people. I get in the like a, a good groove you know what i mean yeah I, I agree with that man that's um why i avoid you know doing uh you know deliveries um let's touch on let's touch, touch upon that real quick yeah i think it's more beneficial to do trips just because you have a higher opportunity to to make more money as far as like longer trips um tips you know a lot of times when you do these deliveries you know you got to wait it's time you can be making money sometimes the food isn't ready then you get two McChickens and a cookie and a McFlurry and you got to deliver it to at least out here to like the 30th floor. You know, these people, they don't want to come outside and you got to find parking. So it could be a hassle sometimes. So I'm with you, man. I prefer to do the, um, the trips, man. But, you know, since this is the two racks a week challenge, you know, let the audience know exactly uh, how many hours did you have to do and how much money did you make? to uh, receive $2,000. Yeah, last week I uh, drove 87 hours and I made 2,954 bucks. Ooh wee, not too shabby. Not too shabby. And was that the most amount of hours you ever worked or? No, I think the most I worked was like 91, mm -hmm. 91 before. Okay. This was a few years back, but like my goal is to drive 100 hours in one week. Okay. Like I never got there. Like some, like I've been close, but I just never got there, bro. <laughs> yeah. How, how did you uh, come up with that goal? Hundred hours. That's a lot, man. Cause I be watching like Elon Musk interviews uh -huh. and see like his work ethic, and he talk about like how many hours he would work. And I was just like, man, like a lot of my role models, like I look up to John D. Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. Like I read his book, and like he's a uh, big on the amount of hours you work more so than the amount of money you make okay nice man yeah 100 that's that's a huge milestone i think the most i ever worked was i want to say maybe 89 I, maybe i hit the 90 hour mark i can't remember but i know for sure i hit 89 uh like a couple years back but yeah man shout out to you man how did you even find out about the <clears throat> about this challenge i was just uh youtube like i i spent most of my time on youtube and I, I just typed in 2000 Uber. And then I seen you popped up like the third video from the top. Okay. I was like, yo, we finally got somebody that's pushing this, like how much money could be made. Okay. Cause I've been driving seven years and I've been hitting two racks, mm -hmm. like, uh, like pretty often. And like, for you to be out here, like pushing that, like, I was just like, yeah, man, a brother getting it. Like he's showing what's going be done yes, and i really feel like uber is a company that's gonna make multi-millionaires bro okay like it's still a young company man like especially if you're investing cutting out the middleman like i just feel like it's just gonna make millionaires bro okay Seriously. yeah yeah i know that that's that's an interesting perspective i never heard nobody uh 
you know, say something like that, like uh, that they're going to make millionaires. I, I I agree with that. I think eventually it is going to be, you know, some uh, millionaire Uber drivers, you know, especially, you know, with awareness of how much money drivers could really uh, make, you know, that's uh, more positive instead of people just complaining and wanting handouts, you know. But, yeah, thanks for, uh, you know, checking me out. So since you've been driving for, um, you know, seven years, what are some of like the like veteran habits, you know, compared to, um, you know, people who just started because people just started, they don't know how to make money and they're like, oh, it's hard or I got to wake up early. How are you able to be so consistent uh, from this long? It's hard, bro. Like sometimes like you got to you got to focus on being disciplined more so than motivated. Mm hmm. And just know that you got to get out here and get it. Like, when you turn turning on that app, like, it's drive time. Like, and don't be afraid to wait for a trip. Because sometimes, like, it averages out where they'll give you a long trip if you, they see, like, your hourly is lower than, like, the average in your, like, community or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I like to, uh, I like to keep new tires on the car. Like, when I get, I'm, when I start getting uh, holes in my tires, I always get new tires. You know what I mean? Because I like to work. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> I like to work too, man. You, yeah, you got to keep those new tires, man, because you'd be surprised how, how often you will go through tires. And it's like every now and then you will have like a, like a streak where you're like nailing the tire. Damn, nailing the tire like three weeks later or a month later. So definitely yeah. got to, you know, handle that. Damn, I just had a question. Um, I, I know a lot of people, like, you know, once they start this, they always focus on things that I think that is not as important um, as they think. I think the most important thing is, you know, putting the time in, staying disciplined, um, putting the hours in, and, you know, try to maximize your earnings. And, uh, you know, a lot of people try to discredit, you know, drivers and, you know, and myself, like if you drive, let's say, 80 some hours like you did, people are like, well, what about maintenance? Or well, what about, you know, the wear and tear of your car or, you know, stuff like that. It's going to, your car isn't going to last. Uh, how can you override that type of, you know, mentality or mindset? You just got to stay focused on like the businessmen. Mm -hmm. Like read the great businessmen and history books, like Andrew Carnegie, like, study the billionaires and how they think about business because we in the library we live in our cars you know what i mean we in the car 80 hours we could soak up so much knowledge so much information from these people and their books and i'm telling you there's like a lot of gems in there my favorite book is uh titan it's okay. the john d rockefeller story okay like I, I i would tell anybody to check that book out yeah you know, sometimes mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to switch it up and read the audio book. Yeah. Like drop. Yeah, I 100% I agree with that. Like, um, at this point, I barely listen to music now. I'm always listening to, like, podcasts or, you know, sometimes I listen to, like, some audio books because I have the, uh, the Audible app. But, yeah, you're right, man. It's like trying to maximize not only your earnings but, like, your knowledge in the car, too. Because you don't yeah. talk to everybody. Not everybody wants to talk when they get in the car, especially if you drive in, like, real early in the morning, like, during commuter hours. You know, people, you know, they have sleep. They don't really want to talk. So it's like you could just do your own thing, have your headphones in, and, you know, soak up some knowledge, man. And uh, who, what are, like, some, like, the top three books, you know, that inspired you or, you know, uh, helped you become, like, an entrepreneur, per se, Number one is Titan. Mm -hmm. Number two is uh, Tim Grover's book, Winning. Yep. Yes, that sir. book is dope. Um, what else I got? I'm drawing a blank. I got to check my audible. Um, the Next Five Moves by Patrick Bat David. PBB. That's pretty mm -hmm. tough. Easy read. You know what I mean? It's very entertaining because he read it himself. Okay. I would say those top three. Yeah, man. And and it's crazy because <clears throat> after doing like about, let's say about 36 of these calls, 
you know, like a lot of these winners all have like the same type of, you know, mindset, you know, like seeking knowledge, you know, trying things out, not afraid to take risk. You know, they embrace uh, the struggle, putting the hours in, grinding, you know, that's that's dope, man. Um, within seven years, how many trips have you uh, completed so far? I think I'm at like a little over 30,000 trips. Okay, damn, you got more than me. <laughs> Just a little yeah. bit. Okay. And uh, for a while, I was I was renting vehicles, man. So, like, when I was renting Lyft, they don't pay you as much when you be renting from them. So, like, I was just driving Lyft strictly. It was just, like, I'm going to run y'all car to the ground then. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yep, yep, because that's how I started off. I started off, you know, doing, like, the, the rental program and, um, who knows how many cars I went through, maybe like five or so, you know, from like rental, then like my own, uh, personal cars. Damn, man. That's, that's crazy. 30,000 trips, man. So, um, what, what do you say? Cause I'm, since you've been here pretty much like since it all started, I'm sure at some point, you know, once you was telling like family and friends or people that what you do, like, yeah, I drive Uber and Lyft full time. Like, what type of things do they say to you as far as, like, oh, that's not a real job or you should get, you know, a real job? I see you smile, <laughs> so I know you heard it. Bro, my ex-girlfriend's mother, she let me have it, bro. Mm -hmm. When I said I was, like, switching over to Uber, I was doing uh, apartment maintenance. I was doing pro wrestling on the side. And I said, yo, I could make a lot of money doing this Uber joint. And her mother sat me down, had a lecture with me. Her dad was just quiet because he understood, like, you know what I mean? The taxi industry, you know, like, you can make money with it. But he was just quiet. And she was just letting me have it. Like, but what you going to do? I want, I'm net need to eat a cake and have it too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, dang. Like, she was just let me have it, bro. Yeah. And that just, like, put a chip on my shoulder to just get after it. Yeah. Because I always use stuff like that for motivation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here, yeah. man. Like, I remember, um, well, before I tell my story, how, how did you even, like, uh, get into the game? Like, did somebody tell you about it, or you just kind of just like, fuck it, I'm just going to try this? Or, like, did you know people was out here making money, and you was like, oh, shit, let me sign up? I had just bought a car. I was doing the apartment maintenance thing, and I was just like, man, let me sign up, try to make some extra dollars. And I would make like forty dollars and go home and like that. Mm -hmm. But then like one uh one New Year's, I had made that three hundred and I was just like, man, like I'm making more money doing this mm -hmm. and I actually like it because I'm get, get to read books, I get to listen to podcasts, and I just rock with it. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I yeah. I I would join like the groups, like the, the Uber ride share groups and seeing people was making Bang. Yep. So I was just like, I'm with it. Yeah, man. Same here. Then I want to, you know, circle back to what I was about to say earlier as far as, um, you know, this whole real job thing. Because, you know, when I was working at the airport part time, you know, a friend of mine, he was working there and he was showing me what he's making part time driving. I'm like, damn, you making twelve hundred, fourteen hundred, sometimes like eight hundred in a week. And I'm like, what? I'm like, shit, let me sign up. Then um, eventually, like a year and a half later, you know, I just went full time. And, um, you know, some people, they were like supportive of it, you know, but some like, what? Like, why would you quit your job? And, you know, you get flight benefits and, you know, that's not a real job. You're just going to, you know, drive people around that like, or that's stupid. It's like, what is a real job? Like, how, like people say a real job. What exactly is a real job? Because if you get a paycheck, then how is that not a real job? Because once you get your direct deposit, only thing I care about is the dollar amount. I don't care about none of the, the titles and you know, I, what company this is. If I see a two uh, at the, at that time, if it was like 12, 13, 1400, that's all I really cared about. Like who cares? Like the, about the title, man. Why do you think people latch on to like all these titles and you know this whole corporate game? People program, bro. <laughs> right. People are program. People yeah. are program, man. And like we, 
we the new generation. So like millennials, we the new leaders, like mm -hmm. the older generation dying off. So what we say go, you know what I mean? Right, right. Like just cause that's the way that they did it. I mean, that's the way we got to do it. Right. Hey, 100% agree, man. Yeah, people are programmed to think that way. And, you know, even, you know, every now and then, you know, you may get some dickhead passenger who say, oh, that's why you, you drive Uber or, you know, they don't really know. It's just like, it is like programmable bots, man. And I don't know. I, I think I get more enjoyment out of driving. And like you said, like sitting there learning some things, pushing myself, you know, learning more about myself, embracing, you know, grinding. Um, you know, that's what I value, man. And it's, you know, nothing more that's valuable than, you know, being in control of your own time, you know, as much as possible. And, um, you know, I think I've been doing this about five and a half or six years, about six years right. so far. And, um, I learned a lot about myself, you know, um, uh, talk about, uh, some of the things, um, you learn about yourself since you've been driving, you know, for, uh, for seven years, talk about like the growth that you had as a person? Well, like, one of the things is I see, like, my dad used to always tell me, like, you got to put that work in. You got to put time into whatever you choose to do. Mm -hmm. And, like, I used to be like, eh, whatever. You know what I mean? But, like, when I see, like, the benefits of working a 70-hour work week, it, it motivates me to keep doing it. And it also motivates me to, like, you got to look at what we doing, man. We getting people, mothers home safe. Yeah. You know what I mean? We could be their last ride to where somebody don't never see their mother again. Right. And, like, that's why I don't get to complaining. Like, this job, we touching lives, bro. Yes, You sir. know what I mean? We touching lives, man. Yeah, I agree, I man. Think, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, I think it's. My bad. I think it's. I just think it's real important to just realize what we're doing and give ourselves a pat on the back, man. Because not everybody built for this. And like I was studying this million. I was looking up like millionaire taxi drivers. It was one guy that was driving taxi, and he was like a, a real estate tycoon based off of that. Just getting that cash and just pushing it into investments. And I don't even look at myself as like a driver. I look at myself more as like a farmer. I just go get them seeds from the passengers and then I funnel it into my investments. Mm. It's over and over again. Bro, I like that, bro. I like that analogy, man. Like a farmer yeah. getting the seeds from the passenger. Yeah, and then, man. And I, I, I agree with that. And um, it's like the more, the longer you've been doing this, if you care, because some people, they just been doing it and they just still pissed off. They just sitting there angry, face look like a prune and shit. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like, you like me, man. It's like, okay, I'm driving. How can I maximize driving? But it's beyond driving. How can I maximize me as an individual, maximize my life? And it's like, okay, yeah, once you first start driving, it's cool. You listen to music, you entertain it. But after like the four or fifth hundred trip, you know, you're like, damn, man, I'm tired of hearing this music. It's the same thing over and over again. Now let me... Let me switch it up, man. How can I grow? Like now, what can I do with this opportunity? And um, <clears throat> I think not too many drivers look at it from that uh, from that aspect or that perspective. It's like we just used to wanting things and and having things given to us. And I think that's why a lot of people get or feel that type of uh, like was it structure and also consistency with a job, but. I don't know. I just don't feel like I would be able to grow or from a job, man. Like I, I learn like every day, like when I'm on the job and I'm doing now, not stuff that y'all try to shove down my, my brain to learn for uh -huh. a company or tell me that I should be doing this. Like, no, nah, man, like I'm gonna do what I want to do, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. What, what do you think are like the three top characteristics to be like a, um, successful driver? Number one is discipline. Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta be disciplined. And be number two is you gotta be hungry for knowledge and feed your brain with good stuff. Like that's why I love your platform, bro. Because like it, it it's lonely without no coworkers. You know what I mean? Sometimes mm -hmm. I go back to Amazon. I'll go work at Amazon for a season just to like 
to change it up a little bit and stay mm-hmm. get in shape, stay in shape. But like, like you all know how much I appreciate your platform, bro. I've just been watching for a week. Thank you. And I was just, I was in the middle of like a two thousand week, and I was just like, man, like this brother, like I rock with. Him. And like Jay Eddie, I've been watching his YouTube. Like, mm-hmm. y'all tough, bro. Thank like you, we, we need y'all, man. I'm telling you, like, deck of millionaires is going to be made off of this, bro. Yeah, I agree, you. man. Like, you know, <clears throat> it's about show, showcasing what could be done with the proper work ethic, the proper knowledge, and, um, like, a group, man. Because if more people start to do it, more people will start to believe that it can be done. Because, mm-hmm. I, you know, you've been in the game long just like me. I'm... I know you You have met people. I used to drive, and they always had some type of negative experience or some excuse. And I'm like, how are you not making money? Especially out here, man. Like, if you out here where it started, you're not making money, you're just a loser. And, and there's no way, you know, to get around it. It's like you in the area where it originated from, and you can't make money. So it has to be like your mindset because you could get – 12 hours a day, most people not willing to do that, which is fine, but you can't sit up here and, you know, point the finger. And um, I think if you want to have an opinion, you should at least try to work 80, 70, 80 hours before you can form an opinion. If you've never done that, right. then it's like, I really don't want to hear what you have to say, man. You know, those people out here driving 17, 20 hours talking shit. Like, like bro, you work less than less hours than a 16-year-old at uh, Chick-fil-A or something. What you talking right. about? And I'm going to tell you, like, what really pushed me to the next level, bro. Like, I I told you about the ride share groups, like, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. There was this deaf lady. She drives. And she made, like, $3,200 in a week. Mm. And and everybody in the group was just shitting on her, bro. Excuse me. No, you good. You good. People were just just letting her have it. Like, why are you driving all this? Mm -hmm. Like, the comments were just terrible, bro. Mm Mm-hmm. So I met met up with her. I was just like, how you doing? You know what I mean? And like, she has, like, a hearing aid. She can hear a little bit, but she mm-hmm. reads lips mostly. Yeah. And, like, we just sat for, like, two hours, and she just say she just worked. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yep. People, see, people make it harder than what it really is, man. And I think I mentioned that in the video I posted the other day. <clears throat> it's like the notion that you work 40 hours, if that's what you want to do, fine, man. But I think... It's a lot of people who do want more and it's like, okay, I want more. I want to be better. I want to maximize my life. Now, how can I get these results and how can I get achieve what I'm actually looking for? Oh, I got to work longer. Okay, fine. Some people actually accept that. And the others is like, oh, well, why would you want to work that much? Or what about work-life balance? Or what about your mental health? There's always some type of objection <laughs> to it, man. And it's, I don't know, man. I just don't get that that mindset, man. It's like this lady, she's deaf. And she put in however many hours she did to make, I assume at least over 70 plus hours to make $3,200. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, instead of congratulating her and asking questions, like, how did you do it? Like you did. People just want to shit on her. But I think that's a, a reflection of how they really feel about themselves. Because, you know, it, I find it interesting. Like, people can show you what can be done instead of you making a choice. Like, damn, I want that type of result. I want to make that and right. try to get help. You want to hate. And, um, right. you know, people block their own blessings, man. And it's, and it's sad, man. It's it's very sad, man. So <clears throat> why don't you – why do you think people don't, don't even make $2,000, like, I think it's, it's lack of self-esteem, man. Like, like I said, like I don't think they they realize like what we actually do, mm-hmm. and like the importance of getting people to their destination safely. Yeah, I look at this as a vocation. Mm-hmm. Like, I I honestly want to do this as long as possible, bro. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. And you get paid every day, so I get to invest every day. But these people, like, they just, they, I don't know, they program, bro. They zombies. You know what I mean? They, they want to go home and watch Netflix. They want to they they watch somebody else working. 
They want to watch the NBA game. They want to go out and drink and watch other people work while they sitting and being lazy. You know what I mean? Yes, but if sir. I'm working, I, if you want to root for somebody work, my favorite athlete was Kobe Bryant. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? He talked about putting that work in. Yeah. And he won't want nobody to be like lazy rooting for him. He wants somebody to about that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's <clears throat> you had to, bro. I know exactly how you feel, man. Like exactly. I could just, it's like, I'm, it's like you in my mind, man. Cause that's what I'm thinking. Like you driving, you talking to people. Oh, do you watch Stranger Things or tech? What about this on Netflix? I'm like, damn, how much Netflix are y'all watching? Like, don't get me wrong, I watch a show here and there, but like, that's not all I do. It's people really like that go to work, come home, watch TV, and that's all they do. So they watching everybody else live the life that they want to live, or you know, enjoy what they doing and getting paid for, it, and they just go to work and come home and ah. I just, I don't know, man. I just, it couldn't be me, man. Then they got the nerve to say, oh, this is not a real job. Like, but, uh, you know, the funny thing is, if most people lost their job, let them say it. Yeah. I let them say it, man. Yep. Go ahead. If most people but lost now, their now, job. Like, I got a brother like you, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you, like, this driver's out here that's actually getting it. Mm -hmm. I was doing, uh, I was doing Lyft and I was getting my car service at the little Lyft shop. It was this Asian dude, and he showed me like how much he made that year with one fourteen, mm -hmm. and one year, and I was just like, damn, like I'm, I ain't, I ain't working like how I should be working. I yeah. had made like sixty five thousand that year, mm -hmm. and I was just like, dang. Yep, I, I, be I, mm -hmm. yep, I had my pick year too, too, like in twenty, was it twenty nineteen when I got my twenty eighteen, and it's like, I'm like damn, I made this much, like. And I wasn't even trying. Like, hold on, let me, let me actually try a little bit harder, man. It's always like you, you strive to be better, man. And it's as simple as that. You don't, you want to be the best version of yourself. And as corny as it sounds, but it's the truth. I mean, I think that's why. I think that's part of uh, living a, you know, a better life. You know, trying to achieve things. You know, striving to be better, not being complacent. And I think once you just accept complacency that's when you start to become bitter and angry because it's like you're doing the same thing over and over again. You have no goals. You have no direction, like what, things that you're trying to achieve, and you just accept it, whatever life gives you. And um, I think that's a, you know, a bad way to go, man. So, uh, what, yeah, what, just, what keeps you out there? What keeps you motivated? Like, what's your why? Why, man? Like, I just love business, bro. Like, I love... I love business. Like, when I was doing the pro wrestling joint, I was independent. And, like, I would make my own merchandise and push it out. And um, I'm just hungry for it, man. Like, I always wanted money. Yeah. And not just 100000 like, millions. <clears throat> to be honest with you, billions. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yep, like, I, there we I made... Go. I, I made some investments in crypto that like paid off. One of them, I put three hundred dollars in and made forty five thousand off of it. Ooh. I ain't even, I forgot I even had it. I just checked my ledger one day. That joint said forty five thousand. I said, "Let me cash this out." Oh, you in crypto? You got you got the cold wallet and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be studying. I'll be listening to it. Like if I see like a company, I'll look up the CEO and see like what what he talks about how he conduct his business like dog cops with shahi that's mm -hmm. what made me start investing in uber when he bought this company out in india he bought a percentage of it and took uber out of it so that they would get a percentage of all their rides i was just like damn that's a smart ass business move mm -hmm. uh, like they not driving there's no uber drivers there no more but he's still getting paid off of all those taxis now 50 percent going straight to uber i was just damn. like man that's dope that's yeah, dope. man. Yeah, you got you right. You gotta you gotta study business, study the greats. But um, you, I think you know a lot of people they just treat it like a job, man. It's like they don't want to grow and learn skill sets and you know uh, learn about business. Like it's you can't be complacent. Why would you only just want to drive pick pick people up and drop people off and look back years 
uh, from the time you started, like, damn, I didn't really grow. I didn't do anything. You just picking up and dropping off. And, you know, it's more to it than that, man. Like, you could become a lot better. And um, unfortunately, it's not that many people that we that we know. I mean, maybe it is. That's like our, like, millionaires or, you know, uh, <clears throat> have, like, a positive experience from doing this. It's just, you know, a lot of cappers and people on the Internet just come up with these titles. So, like, clickbait, like, ooh, what they talking about? I'm like, man, you don't have a drive. Like, what are you talking about, man? You're just talking shit, like, to a camera. Right. <laughs> you know, it's I a lot of them, bro. Yeah, man. You know, I can't stand that. It's like, and there's people like me and you, you know, who got skin in the game, man. Like, hours and hours of driving, you know, multiple cars. You know, it's like uh -huh. you've been through it all. Like, you season. And um, you just got other people who come on for a week just to do like a video bro there's how much drivers can make in a week i'm like bro you still ain't make shit <laughs> like, you suck like shut up man like leave it to the people out here that's you know really driving man what, what's some of the things that uh that just irritate you about you know people who don't embrace the work and um try to you know shit on the people who do work or discredit them i try to turn them out like i try to block people like, mm -hmm. I have a buddy that I put on a lift game, and the other day he asked me for a hundred dollars, and I'm like, "Your car running? Like, why you ain't working?" So it's just like, I mean, I ain't got time for him no more. Yeah, you know what well, I mean? Smart. Like, you just ain't got, you just ain't got it. Yeah, man. Then they, then they'll try to get mad at you for not giving the money. It's like, bro, like, I'm giving you knowledge and game. Like, bro, all thing I do is just sign up and drive. All your problems will be fixed. Well, I ain't gonna say all, oh, but most of them will be fixed, you know, just from having more money. But you don't want to do that. And it's like, then you wonder why you're in the situation you're in now. Only you responsible for your life and you could fix your own uh, problems. But, you know, people, they don't look at it that way. Like I said, they just want handouts, gimme, gimme, gimme type, man. People are lazy, man. Oh, super lazy. <laughs> and, and, it's even uh, easier, more easier now to be lazy because you got so many distractions. You know, people got fucking cell phones. You know, so you got a app, you got an iPhone. A lot of people got iPhones and iWatches, so they on the phone and they on the watch, and it's like just distractions and Netflix, and you know they just stay sedated and they don't know what's going on, and boom, before you know, it, it's like fuck. What did I? What did, what happened with my life, man? <laughs> Yeah. motivated as we are bro like to be honest with you if like that could consume us like we could be affected by people that got those negative outlooks yeah like i yeah. it was like a year i had that was real rough i was just hanging around negative people and it affected my uh work you know what i mean and i had to cut those people off but i know like if you listen to it too much it can definitely affect you for sure yeah, and it, and um, it's a lot of that at work environments. Like you know, depending on where you work, it's a lot of that, man. People come in, they just start complaining. It's like, bro, you've been here 10, 15 years. Just leave, like, and it it just spread. One person complained, the next, you know, everybody else complained, and eventually you start complaining. It's like, fuck, and you got to be uh, conscious of that because you will fall right into that trap, man. And it's like, you know, before you know it, that energy is on you. So. You know, that, that's another benefit I like about, you know, uh, driving. It's like, you know, your solitude. You, it's like you can control your thoughts. Because if you in the car, man, and it's not you no know, conversation going on because they don't want to talk, whatever, you forced to think. <laughs> you going to think yeah. about something. Yeah, you're going to think. <laughs> you're going to think about something in that car, man. You're like, all right, man, now what I want to do, what I need to do, what I want to achieve. And um, unfortunately, Stuff like that scares a lot of people, you know, just them sitting there and being comfortable with thinking and their own thoughts. It's like they need some type of stimulation so they can just uh, be sedated and be entertained. But it's like, <laughs> you know, like, no, nah, man, you know, I like thinking, I like planning, man. And, uh, you know, especially once you start, you know, uh, seeing results. You know, and um, real quick before we get up out, in your opinion, why why do you think this challenge is so important. 
this challenge is very important, man, because you need a community. Mm. If you a hustler, man, you need other hustlers. You need business-minded people that feed you, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to tell you, when I when I saw your video, bro, I was, I, was, I fell in love, bro. I was like, finally, because for like years, like I was just checking. Yeah. And this was like the first time I checked like Uber, like Uber drivers in a while. And I just yeah. checked it last week and then you popped up and I seen you had like this long list of videos. So I seen like the work ethic. I was like, yeah, he's serious. He making the videos pretty much daily. You know what I mean? Showing his receipts. I was just like, he's really getting after it. And it's, it's important for people to see that what's possible. Yeah. If you just put that work and that time in. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah, it is. And uh, I'm going to tap into that as well. I think it's important and why I started it is because, you know, I look at I look back when I first start, you know, driving like it was cool because, you know, you on your own, man. You ain't got nobody breathing down your neck. You ain't got nobody telling you, uh, OK, you going to lunch at this time and try to cut your lunch short for whatever reason, having you get back to work. And um, it's easy to make a lot of mistakes like once you first start because one, you don't know what to expect. Two, all the emotions from you just, you know, having like complete autonomy over your schedule. Like, you know, it's a pro and, a, and it's also a con. So it's easy not to push yourself and it's easy, you know, to get behind uh, on bills and stuff if you're not disciplined and, you know, you don't really set goals and put the time in. You know, because if you're not really analyzing how much money you need to make uh, as far as like budgeting, as far as, oh, damn, my rent is this, this, okay, I need this to profit, you know, you could screw yourself, which I think a lot of people do. But beyond that, um, you know, we're trying to grind, man. And um, a lot of people want to make $100,000. So the best way is like you got to at least make $2,000, man. You know, it's a difference between making a thousand and, and seeing a two and a comma and three zeros behind the whole different feeling, whole different ball game. And, uh, you know, if you want to make that, and it's like, shit, you got to put the work in and it'll be good for you. Some people, they they try to run away from the word. Like, no, I don't want no, no, that's a lot of hours. So like they right. psych they self out and they would never reap those, those benefits. So you gotta you gotta put the work in just for your own self esteem, your own mindset. Because if you do it right. once and you hit two thousand dollars, it's like now you know you're capable. So now you know what you could really do. And I think a lot of people have never tried. You know, maybe you work forty hours, maybe work a little OT, forty eight, fifty hours. But it's a whole different beast when you get up to seventy, eighty hours, man. You like, damn, man, like, what have I been yeah. doing? I've been selling myself short. Like, damn, I'm not so much been, more. Mm -hmm. We always been told 40 hours is full time. So you you think like, oh, if I'm working 40 hours, that's full time. If I'm working over that, I'm a slave. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that becomes that mentality. Like, no, nah, I ain't working no more 40 hours. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. last week, I only worked six days. I took Saturday off for mm -hmm. the Sabbath. Like, I'm, I'm a man of God. I took off Saturday and I just grind up it other six days made 2900 and that's without like a lot of bonuses for real yeah yeah and that's and that's what it is man because like shit you know you know what you're capable so even if you are i mean if you do want to take a day off it's like shit i know i can just get out there and get it but a lot of people they don't know what they're capable of because they never done it so when they take a day off it's like maybe it's the end of the world for them but it's like hey, it's, it's no issue and everybody will if I dry that much, I really don't have a life. But I don't know, man. I I kind of disagree with that. Or maybe they don't have a life because they don't have any things outside of driving that they striving for or, or any goals. And maybe they schedule, you know, it's kind of messed up. But um, last year, last year I went to Dallas for a whole month mm -hmm. and still made a hundred. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was in Dallas for a whole month, still made a hundred k. Like. You just got to be just disciplined, man. And you yeah. got to feed yourself, your, your mind, good stuff. Yeah. Like a lot of people just watch bullshit all, all day, entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's cool and all, but it's the time for that. 
like I don't got no kids yet. I'm 34. It's, it's I'm I'm hunting, bro. Yeah. Like I'm I'm behind. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm hunting. Yeah, man. I, I feel it, man. It's like you do inventory, you're like damn, man, I'm not at where I want in life, and it's like, you know, you get hungry. It's like you want to get out there and um accomplish things and. You know, I, I love this, man. Because people like, oh, you just driving the car. But that's just basic. Like, that's just basic, dumb, like, fucking low IQ <laughs> type shit. Like, you just driving the car, picking people up, drop them off. But a lot of people have more creativity and more inside themselves than, you know, what's actually demonstrated or shown, man. And, you know, shout out to you for actually, you know, reaping those benefits, man. Shout out to Pushing you, bro. Yourself. Cause like one of the things I respect about you, man, is that you in shape. Mm-hmm. Like I I had I had got real fat just driving like all the miles. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I just recently like lost 30 pounds. But like one of the things I respect about you is that you in shape. You make entertaining con uh content and it's informative. It's like bro, you a difference maker. Thank you. You a difference maker. Thank and you. like Uber gonna have Uber owe you a lot of money because <laughs> a lot of careers is gonna be launched off of this, bro. Yeah, we'll see, man. But you know, I man, I like uh, helping people out, man, and having moments like this, man. If they find me, they find me. If they don't, they don't. But you know, me connecting with people and you know trying to have a network and that that's that's the most important thing to me, like. I never went into it like, oh, I'm gonna do this so Uber can find me and maybe they'll cut me a check. I did it to like, man, I, I want some people with the same mindset, you know, right? Because you know, once we get on and start traveling or maybe go to like a different city or state, it's like, shit, I know somebody in there, you know, they made two thousand dollars. It's like they already vetted, they got the same mindset, same interests. It's like, shit, let's kick it or, you know, pull up and you know, that's what it's about, man. Cause like you said, it's more about awareness and, you know, uh, showing what could be uh, accomplished with the, the proper mindset. Mm-hmm. God yeah, bless but, you, bro. Thank you, man. You know, before we get up out of here, man, like you want to leave any uh, words to like the, the, the new people who's going to be seeing this and they just like fresh to the ride share game or, you know, the current drivers out there who never made, you know, two thousand uh, dollars. What type of words of wisdom can you give them? I would say, kill it in the rain. Whenever, it, whenever it's a rainy day, kill it. You know what I mean? Drive safe, but like, try to work them rainy days. Mm-hmm. Work the days that nobody want to work. The hours nobody want to work. I wrote a couple notes. Okay. Always compete with the previous day of earnings. Um. Cut out the middleman and buy Uber stock, Uber and Lyft stock. Mm-hmm. Start cutting out that middleman and earn a, get a percentage of this company. Um, be willing to work 24 hours if you want to win. Mm. And uh, love the passengers that wear headphones because you can listen to whatever you want to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a good one, man. That's a good one. Right, right. <laughs> oh man, I like that, man. Bro, I like those notes, man. Those those are are good notes, man. And um, yeah, man. Like if y'all never, you know, made two thousand dollars, man. Just you know, keep trying, man. I'm not sure how many hours y'all working, but if y'all only working forty, fifty hours, I would say you know, turn it up. You know, try to push yourself, man. Strive to. Strive to do like 84 hours. Just try it. Try at least one time. Even if you never do it again, just try it just to see what you may potentially make. Right. And, just um, one week. Yep. Just one, one week. week. And that way, you know for yourself that you did everything possible. So you can never, oh, it's not their fault. It's not, even if you don't make, let's say you don't make $2,000, but you did 84 hours. It's like, shit, you did everything possible. So, you know, you know, you're capable of putting that work in and uh, and don't and don't listen to all these negative people who, oh, that's not a real job or you should find something else, man. Like only, you know, what's good for your life and what you're trying to do, man. 
And in my opinion, I don't think it's any major difference from doing this uh, compared to working in a corporate job. You just working uh, for yourself under contract with Uber and um, you could potentially make more money from but most from, my, from what I hear from most people, you know, most people, oh, I was making, you know, 1200 biweekly and I started doing this. I start making more money, you know, already. So, yeah, man, don't listen to negative people. Uh, just try to get out there, put the hours in, see what you come up with and set some tangible goals for yourself, man. Figure out what you want to do, what you good at, what type of skill set that you want to work on behind the scenes that you can get paid for. And um, I think that's important too. And, you know, never, never stop learning. I think a lot of people stop learning. Uh, they stop trying to, you know, push their self. They sit up here listening to music all day. Never stop learning, man. Feed your mind, feed your mind. And that's important, man. Because when it's when it get hard and you start listening to stuff that, you know, that's motivating or inspiring, that's bettering your life. It's gonna keep you out there when 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 things get hard, man. And it is. It's gonna be times where it get hard. You just like, dang, why am I doing this? Then, um, you know, like shortly after that, regardless if it's a week, month, three months, you are gonna have some confirmation. At some point, it's gonna be some sign to be like, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm out here. That's why I'm grinding. It's like you know, you know, you gotta believe. Believe that you could do it. Believe that you could change your life, man, and never give up. And um, you know, I'm gonna end it right there, man. You know, thank you, thank you, man. I, pr I appreciate that, man. You was giving a lot of game, <laughs> a lot of game, Honestly. man. Yeah, man. Season. God wet. bless you, bro. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. But um, yeah, folks, like the video, comment, share the video, <clears throat> share this video, friends, family. Um, people who, who are thinking about driving, who haven't, you know, signed up yet, or they're currently driving, but have not made $2,000 share this video, man. We giving game and, um, causing awareness two racks a week, man. See the t-shirt. So if you see people wearing these, man, you know, you know what time it is, but, um, yeah, man, till next time over and out peace. Racks a week, racks a week, Ronnie Speed, yeah, Ronnie Speed, 60 hours.